tea with real southern woman and I really want a glass of tea and I don't think Chris is going to get up and make me one. So when you get finished with a couple of comments, can you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I sat down and hit the live button before I made my sweet tea and I'm real dry mouthed. I guess I could suck on a cough drop. Just one second and I'll be right back, but I don't have time to run and make a glass of tea. Okay. Today we're going to be in Proverbs. And we talked um, last Friday about Solomon and his wisdom. So today, we are going to read the first chapter in Proverbs and talk about the different verses. Um, that light behind me is shining too. Let's see if we can get rid of that a little bit. Okay. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. I hope you are having a good morning. It's Monday. I never can look into this camera correctly. I, I can never tell if I'm supposed to look like here or like straight into the camera or that way or this way. <laughs> anyway, hey Deborah, I hope you're feeling better this morning. Hey Mary, um, Deborah just had, um, hernia surgery. I had a hernia repaired one time, but mine was near my belly button, and I do have a hernia that's in between my esophagus and stomach that I've never had repaired. Um, I just try to do better for, for my reflux, or, you know, and try to eat better. Um, so let's start reading, why don't we? Let me grab my Bible. And if y'all want to turn to Proverbs 1 this morning, you can. Um, it's pretty much in the center of the Bible. If you don't know where it is, it's almost right in the center of your Bible. And uh, I picked up this Bible. This is actually May's Bible. It is a King James Version Teen Study Bible. It's an actual good Bible. Like if you're kind of a young Christian, or even if you're an old Christian and you've been and you've been saved for 50 years, but you've never really picked up the Bible and read it through like you should. A teen Bible is really good because it explains things, you know, in a simpler manner, uh, you know, that I like a regular study Bible that a preacher would buy or a teacher would buy. So, I mean, I would recommend it. And, of course, I'm going to recommend the KJV because that's what I like. That's what I've read and that's what I can remember. Um... Now, in this team Bible, I'll read what they say, okay? Because, I mean, it's to us, too. It says, how can you get... This is good advice in Proverbs, of course. It's just all full of good advice. And it says, how can you get along with someone who doesn't like you? What is the best way to make friends? Lots of good advice is what you'll find in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs are short sayings that help people make wise choices. Lord, do we need that or what? The advice found in Proverbs makes good sense for both Christians and non-Christians. For example, a soft answer turneth away wrath. And that's what me and Chris were just talking about. He gets up in the mornings and he looks at my comments on YouTube. I actually do not look at the comments on YouTube. So those of y'all who, I mean, sometimes I do if I have time, but I hardly ever respond to them. Chris does. So most of my YouTube comments, Chris reads and responds to. And if there's one that's really good, he'll tell me. And if there's one that's bad, he'll tell me. And uh, this morning we got one. And um, she talked about how I was throwing away food. And that I probably wasn't a country girl if I was going to throw away food. Now he says... Um, you know, why don't I say this or that? And I said, what we need to do is kill her with kindness because she's already told me in another video something where she's telling me what to do. And now she's telling me what to do again. And, you know, I told Chris after reading Proverbs and what King Solomon said about life in general and people in general were, were that they were all vain. And let me say this. When you get people who comment negatively, 
or try to tell you the right way to do things. And I'm guilty of it. I think I can cook better than anybody else. And I think I can make a sweet potato souffle taste better than anybody else's. You know, I'm guilty. But it's one thing to think it. And it's another thing to be mean to people. Um, so I told him, I said, just kill her with kindness this morning. Um, because everybody's so vain, you know. She's vain because she thinks she knows the best way. And she knew that I needed a bigger bowl. And now she thinks I shouldn't throw away my flour, you know. And she tells me why and tells me I'm not even country because of it. Now, does, is all that true? No. What it is, it's a person who believes that she knows the best way to do everything. And that her way is the only way. And that everybody should be just like her because she's vain. Okay? And I used to be that way too. And sometimes I still am. And we have to work on it. I mean, we're all sinners. I mean, that's why if you are a Christian and you think you don't sin then you're sinning because you're lying to yourself, thinking you don't sin. So you're a sinner anyway. And, but, I just find it odd. But I mean, you know, I mean, how many people have watched that video now, Chris? 23,000? I mean, 10 or 20,000 people have watched the video. I've only got a couple of ugly comments. So, most people are nice, you know. But anyway, we're going to talk about Proverbs because Solomon felt like vanity was a big thing. It says it's better to be polite than to yell back insults when someone's angry at you. Usually this will stop a fight, but not always. Proverbs describe what usually happens, not necessarily what God promises to do. And Proverbs, remember this, it is not commandments from God. Proverbs are not um, commandments, they're not prophecies, they're not doctrine, they're just good, good advice to help us in our walk with Christ and life in general, like it said, even if you're a non-Christian. So Solomon, the smartest man that God ever made or gave wisdom to, the most wisdom to, wrote these, and they're really, really good. So we're going to start in Proverbs 1, and I'm going to start to read. And as I read a scripture, we'll talk a little bit about it as we go. And the other day I talked about um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And a lot of you probably wonder, now what does that exactly mean? Or what is it to fear? That kind of thing. Um, so we're going to talk about this this morning. It says, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of the wisdom, justice and judgment and in equity, equity. And I think I looked that one up. Y'all, uh, I got the vocabulary of a country girl too. Let me, wait a minute. What did I do with my piece of paper I wrote down my stuff on? Y'all give me a minute. I got to find my piece of paper. What's equity mean, Chris? Uh, the same, not having to equal. To be fair. Fair. Okay. To give subtility to the simple. What? Subtlety. Sub. It says S U B T I L T Y. Subtlety. Subtlety. To the simple and to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Let me find my paper where I wrote this stuff down. I don't know what I did with my paper. Lord of mercy. I study. Oh, here it is. I study, and then I can't find where I studied. Okay. Wisdom is God's way. Receive 
To receive the wisdom means that you've got to take it and carry it with you. In other words, if you're going to read these Proverbs, you've got to do more than just read them. You've got to apply them in your life. Sub, sub to, to, I can't even say that. Subtlety. 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 Is shrewdness and craftiness. So let's read that again. To give shrewdness and craftiness to the simple. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. When he says that somebody is simple, he says they're foolish, okay? So he's saying that um, they're shrewd and crafty, but then the young man, uh, knowledge, the one that receives knowledge and discretion, he calls a young man instead of the simple. It says, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto the wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, and this is where he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, you know as well as I know, if you've got kids, You'll always have one that'll listen to you and one that won't. Or you'll have one uh, that if you give them a spanking, they humble themselves. Or they'll humble themselves before they even need the spanking. And then you've got one that you could spank a million times and they'd still be just as stubborn and not care. No matter what you spank them with. I've got two just like that. i got one that's real humble and one that knows everything. And they've been that way since they were little enough to have an, a T90. I mean... Two and three years old. So, um, that's scary when you've got a kid like that because you know they're already uh, despising instruction. You know what I mean? And if they're going to despise your instruction, they're probably going to despise the instruction of the Lord. So you may as well get ready for it. It says, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And, and let me just say this, too. When I got saved, I was uh, probably about 12, 11 or 12. I know I got saved, y'all, just plain as day. I ain't never doubted it. I mean, it's just pure as gold, okay? But let me say this. I really wasn't crazy about wisdom and instruction, when, uh, especially once I got on up into my teen years and 20 years. Uh, I didn't read the Bible. And I, I didn't like being instructed. Now, I was saved enough that there's, there's people that blow my mind, even when I was a young person, that go to church and they still live a wicked life. And I will say this, when I wasn't living right for God, I could not go to church without feeling so guilty. I just, I just couldn't go, so I didn't go. I didn't like feeling guilty, so I just didn't go anymore. So... Let me just say that because you can be saved and still despise the wisdom and instruction, okay? Salvation is a simple thing. Believing in God is simple. And uh, knowing who he is and knowing you're a sinner and asking him to forgive you. But what's hard is wanting to be wise and wanting to know and follow his instructions. And like I said, many people that go to church don't do that. A lot of them don't. It says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, this is warnings against violence. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, and let us wait for blood, and let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. And let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole and as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among with us and let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from thy path, their path. And all that saying is these people... So, you know, they're, they're uh, planning and scheming and stealing and gaining what other people have worked hard for. 
and they think they deserve it, and they share it, and they're all the same. And he says, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. Now look this one up. Surely in vain the net, which is a trap, is spread in the sight of any bird. But it means man. So he's letting them know that the vanity spreads a, a trap for every man. That's us two women, men and women. Vanity is a trap. Okay, and it's a sin, and uh, whether that lady realizes it or not, but her being ugly to me on my side and thinking that her way is the only way and the best way, it's sinful, and it's sinful to me too, and I'm going to have to work on that when we get out to California, if we get to go, uh, to make sure that I let my team cook. Now, I will taste it, and if I think they should add something, I will tell them, but I have to have confidence in their ability to cook and not feel like I have to take control because if I do that, then it's sinful. It says, um, let's see, if they lay wait for their own blood, they lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Now, this is about wisdom crying out. And wisdom are the ways of the Lord, okay? And the Lord reveals himself to us in different ways, in different, different times in our life. And this is real important. This is the most important part of the proverb to me. And it says, Wisdom crieth out, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city. She uttereth her words, saying. Now what this means is that wisdom cries loud, out where everybody can hear it. Like if there's a uh, place where it can be amplified in the city, that's where wisdom would be. And she would be yelling the ways of the Lord for everybody to hear her. Okay, that's what that means. And it says, how long, ye simple ones, which means foolish ones, will ye love simplicity, foolishness? And the scorners delight in their scorning. That means they boast. They delight in their boasting, and fools hate knowledge. Now, this is not knowledge about reading about science or math or literature. It's knowledge of the word of the Lord, okay? And it says that fools hate it. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you because I have called and you refused. So wisdom is called. So if you're hearing this right now and you're going to go off and you're not going to listen Wisdom's calling, okay? It says, I have called, and it's not me, it's the word of God, not me. It says, but ye have, uh, but I have called, and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand, and no man's regarded it. But ye have set at naught all of my counsel, and would none of my reproof. You wouldn't have my counsel. You, would, you wouldn't have my reproof getting on to you. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish comes upon you, then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel, they despise all of my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own ways. 
worldly ways and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. And destroy here means kill. But whoso, listen to this, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. That is so amazingly shouted out, black and white. It's the first chapter that Solomon tells us about. It's the first thing he lets us know is the most important in our life is the fear of the Lord and walking in the ways of the Lord. And he lets us know that if we're foolish and we ignore it, that when we get ready for God for something and we want to get down on our knees and pray, if we get the call and we've got cancer, or we get the call and our kids had a wreck going down the road, he may not listen. Now, some of y'all might not like that, may not believe it. They might, you might think God is always there. And God is always there with his arms wide open. But I have to say, there's places in the Bible that say he's not. Not every time. It's according to how much you have been shown by wisdom crying out to you. It's according to how much he has been a part of your life to show you what what you needed to be doing, and you ignored him. Now, um, that's up to God, and only we, and only God knows whether or not he'll answer our call. But it's, he says plainly, if you hearken unto him, you'll dwell safely, and you shall be quiet from the fear of evil. And let me say this. The only way we hearken unto him, it's not just salvation. It's, uh, I mean, once you're saved, you're his child. You're a child of the Lord. And he may reproof you and he may, you know, chastise you. But um, his wisdom comes from reading his word, y'all. Not just listening to the preacher not just listening to a Bible study, but you actually reading his word. You get so much more out of that. That's the only way he can talk to you. And I've said this before. We talk to him through prayer, and none of us, I'm sure, I'm guilty, pray as much as we ought to. Um, because if we did, we would um, get rid of our burdens and our heavy loads and our cares, and um, we would just be, it would just be, it's just be amazing. But let me say this. Um, the only way God can talk to you is not through some, you know, crazy angel showing up in your house or something stupid like that that people think. God talks to you through his word. That's the only way he talks to y'all. So if, and, and me, so if we never pick it up and read it, um, he don't ever get to talk to us. And what kind of relationship is that really? A lot of us think we have this great relationship with God and we have this great relationship with Jesus Christ, but we never even pick up our Bible and read it. We think we got a great relationship just because we read a few verses, you know, when we go to church or look at a Bible study. But, um, I mean, I'm guilty too, y'all. I'm just as guilty as you are. But we need to work on it, okay? According to um, Solomon, wisdom's crying. Wisdom is crying out loud to us. Read me. This is, this is God's ways. This is God's commandments. This is all about Jesus Christ. This whole book is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. That's Jesus Christ, y'all. 
Um, Teresa says she don't have a Bible. Teresa, I'll mail you a, a Bible if you'll if you will send me a personal message and your email and your actual address. I will send you a good study Bible. I've got so many Bibles in my house. Chris says I'm a Bible nut. Every time we go somewhere, I pick one up. <laughs> he gets tired of it. I'll send you one of my Bibles. Um. And like I said, if you're if you're new at reading the Bible, regardless of how long you've been saved, if you're kind of new at reading it, a teen study Bible really is a very good Bible to start with. I think it's much better than starting with a uh, regular study Bible. I mean, if I had never read the Bible a couple of times, I wouldn't want to start out with a study Bible. Um, it's harder to understand, okay? And don't think you can't understand the King James Version. It's written on a fourth grade level. And surely all of you have been through the fourth, fourth, third or fourth grade. Uh, it's not that hard. Another thing is if you're saved, you've got the Holy Spirit living in you. The Holy Spirit will help you discern your reading. And if somebody is getting something out of a verse that you don't get, that doesn't mean that you're not interpreting right or that you're, you shouldn't be reading it. That just means that God's not quite ready for you to get what the other person got. He's going to feed you with baby food to begin with. Then he's going to start feeding you with some fruits and vegetables. And then he's going to start feeding you the meat. So don't think you can pick up the Bible and just start with the meat of it. Okay? That's not how it works, y'all. Um, that's just not how it works. Uh, have faith in God. Pray that he'd help you uh, interpret the Bible. Don't just... Throw it to the side and just automatically assume that none of it makes sense and that, you know, you'll just wait until somebody tells you about it. Um, don't do that. That's how God speaks to you. And it changes your life. It really changes who you are on the inside. If I get up and I read my Bible, y'all, I'm a better mama. I'm a better wife. I'm a better neighbor. I mean, it makes all the difference in the world if I don't then I'm meaner. I mean, I'm just, I'm automatically more in my flesh. I'm automatically going to do things and say things that I wouldn't have normal that I wouldn't do if I just get up and spend a little bit of time in his word. And it also calms you down like crazy. Um, if I, I used to, if Chris was gone out of town or whatever, and I'd be scared, I'd just pick up my Bible and read it, and God would make me feel safe. Because he does make us safe, y'all. Um, and it would help me. I hope y'all are having a good Monday. I've talked plenty. Um, Chris is here. We've got a new schedule. I'll tell you what's on the schedule for today. You'll probably think a schedule. Lord, you're retired. If I don't have a schedule, I lose my mind. Mondays, Bible study. Clothes. We do the clothes. We wash all the clothes and we dust the house and we run errands and we see mom and we stock up her stuff. On Tuesdays, we do sheets and floors. Wednesdays, trash and toilet paper, etc., making sure everything's stocked. Thursday, doctor's appointments. Friday, Bible study and clean the bathrooms. Saturday, uh, live Facebook videos and cooking for videos. Sunday, all I do is make a menu and go to church and rest. That's it. Um, I will say this to y'all so y'all can pray. Um, I have found an area above my right breast that is getting thick, feels thicker. I went to my breast surgeon the other day. Remember I told y'all it looked, made me look like I have cleavage and I really don't. Well, I went to the breast surgeon and he says that it's not, uh, got anything to do with my implant, that he feels like it's fatty tissue. And of course he, you know, said we could always do liposuction there and, me and Chris was like, well, we're losing weight. You know, I don't want to have a liposuction done when I'm losing weight, and it might go away anyway. But um, the problem is, is that it feels, it feels, if I, if I run over it, it feels kind of like a longer, like a longer piece of tissue about that long, and it's kind of thick feeling, okay? It doesn't feel like a round tumor or anything like that. But when I had triple negative breast cancer, that's exactly how it felt when it started, and I had one in the bottom that was an actual tumor, and then I had one on the top that was still encased. It wasn't invasive yet, but the one on the top felt just like that, y'all. It didn't feel like a tumor 
or nothing. It just felt like a little thick area, kind of like scar tissue feels. So Tuesday, I made an appointment, and I'm going to my breast doctor. Now, this is a different man, and I'm going to flat tell him, you're going to ultrasound it while I'm here and needle it while I'm here. Because whether or not you think it's cancer or not don't matter to me. I want to know that it's not. So hopefully Tuesday I will be going in and he'll needle it. Needle boxes are so easy. They just stick a needle in there and draw it out. The last time I had cancer, when they needled the top one, that's all they did is a little needle. It came back positive. And uh, so I just want to check it out so that I feel better. And maybe it's nothing because that whole side's been radiated. And that I'm not supposed to, nothing's supposed to come back when you've been radiated. But you know, hey. But... Y'all can pray for that. Um, and I probably won't know anything for a couple of weeks, I wouldn't think. Or at least seven days or so, I'll ask them. But, um, and even if it is, hey, I beat it once, I'll try to beat it again, right? I'm not worried about it, because I know I'm in God's hands. I'm really not. Um, he'll, he'll get me through it, and if he don't, I'm just going to be walking on streets of gold. I mean, how could anybody be so scared to go to heaven? I have no idea. And people go, it's your natural instinct not to want to die. Yeah, kind of, but if you know you're secure and where you're going is so much better and full of splendor and amazing, and Christ said, um, wait a minute, I'll get it in a minute, it takes me a minute. I just know he, know, he says that he'll come again and he's preparing a place for us and for where you will be there also. In other words, he's gonna he's he's preparing our home in heaven, and it's supposed to be wonderful. So I'm not worried about going to heaven. I'm really not. Um, and if my kids have got any of the drive that I have in me, then I'm not worried about them either because they'll make it. You know. Um, yes, to die is gain. Ain't that the, the truth? And people don't understand that. Most people don't. But I mean, good Lord, have mercy. Could you imagine living in a place with no sin? With no aging, with no um, bitterness and anger and wrath and vanity and just a beautiful place with streets of gold and walls of uh, precious stones. Anyway, let's say our prayers. We're losing some. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, dreaming too much about heaven, I guess. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for this Monday, the new day. Um, of our week. I know Sunday is, but I kind of think it's the work, starting with the work day. Um, help us have a blessed day. Be with all the ladies and gentlemen who choose to watch the Bible study. May your wisdom cry out, Lord, to us and others in the streets and in the courtyards, and may our ears be open and hear, and may we look, take our eyes, and, and let them see in your word, Lord, instead of just in this world. Um, just be with us as we go throughout the day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I love you all. Bye. See you Friday.